It's a pleasure to introduce uh, our speaker today, Fuad Cayman. Uh, the talk is talking the Middle East, the Middle East in Turkey, state power identity in global turmoil. <coughs> Sorry, we were running because we have running with the elevator. <laughs> so, okay. Um, uh, Professor Fuad, uh, he teaches at uh, international relations at um, Sambashi University in Istanbul. He's also the director of the Istanbul Policy Center, member of the Turkish Science Academy, uh, served as a member of the Wise People Commission in the Peace Process, and more important, he is a, uh, did his PhD here at, at Carton <laughs> a long time ago. I have the pleasure and honor of studying with him. Uh, the first course that I took was with uh, Professor Rian Mahon. <laughs> so it has been a long time. And the other thing that I want to uh, maybe mention that is not in the, in the website is that um, Fuad is really what we can say a public intellectual. He is really committed uh, to build dialogues with civil society between Turkey and, and Europe. He has written a lot of books. Uh, you have the, the list uh, there with a lot of topics. But also he read, uh, writes in the newspapers. He's very, very well known in Turkey. He is all the time on television. And um, uh, yeah, I think that's one of the main things that, the, at least from my point of view, is very difficult to to, to do. And for uh, Fuad has been one of his, his strengths uh, of being this type of intellectual community to democracy to peace, to uh, building better relationships between countries, with Europe, also with North America, with Canada. So please join me in joining uh, an applause for Fuad. Thank you, Christina. Uh, I am delighted to be back in my uh, old department, or the department where I did my PhD, as Christina said and uh, very happy to be with uh, old long friends and uh, with my uh, professors and Professor Eli, Tim and uh, and thank you Christina and uh, Fiona is not here for Fiona and Anne to make this uh, happen to organize this uh, this for me uh, what I would like to do is uh, to uh, to share with you my uh, my views on or my take on what is happening uh, in the Middle East, the MENA region. Uh, and I would like to do it actually uh, in a way to connect uh, Turkey and the Middle East, but in a sort of a regional and uh, global uh, context. And uh, I will uh, uh, give you some uh, facts in the beginning, uh, some uh, uh, references. I'm quite sure uh, uh, you are all familiar with, with, with those, but, but it, uh, for me, and also for me to build my argument, uh, I have to lay out this uh, <coughs> you know, uh, framework, uh, they are useful for, for, for it. Uh, and then uh, I will, at the end, do a little uh, reflections on, on, on IR theory and, and how these things are also related to international relations theory. And, and then we will do actually a question and answer period and in a dialogical manner we we actually uh, uh, discuss. Anyway, uh, as uh, lots of people, policymakers, academics say, uh, tectonic uh, storms have moved in, in, in the MENA region. Uh, we were uh, very hopeful uh, a couple of years ago in 2010 when the Arab Spring started. It was a process for transformation. We were actually uh, talking about uh, the post-colonial reconstruction of this geography in which uh, people, first time, rather than being uh, recipients uh, and passives uh, of, of, of the uh, uh, Eurocentric history, they are actually uh, making history, they are, they are uh, engaging uh, to, to, to change history for uh, what we call to be a subject of history, to be subject of their own history, to be digni to, 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 for, for dignity, it was actually an, an, an effort for, for dignity, and also, uh, in a way, uh, it is a process for uh, 
uh, equality and, and, and good, go good governance. Uh, nobody was asking for more religious uh, you know, right, you know, ri rights, uh, more uh, Sharia states, more authoritarian states. They were actually, like everybody in the world, going for a better state, an uh, uncorrupt state, uh, welfare, jobs, and, and, and uh, at least uh, to be able to see what happens next day, which is uh, certainty. And uh, so uh, it was uh, a hopeful moment uh, for, for two years, started, as you all know, Tunisia and, and, and Egypt. We got little actually uh, problematic in, in, in Libya, but of course the crisis uh, started with, with Syria, and of course before, before Iraq, there is a very big uh, crisis situation uh, in, 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 in the Middle East. Hope uh, is replaced by, by uh, despair, uh, you know, uh, hope and transformation is, has been replaced by internal wars, human tragedies, uh, and, and uh, as if actually all this uh, old language is coming back, uh, old language of Orientalism, of, of order, of, of state, and so on, so on and so forth. And we have actually uh, big uh, changes, but, but unfortunately, uh, this the direction, the path, the trajectory of, of these changes are not moving as, as we actually expected or as we, we, we like it. And uh, there are uh, actually, we are living in a moment, in a globalizing uh, moment, a tur tur turmoil, in which uh, in international uh, relations theory, we talk about the, 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 the fact that uh, the more globalized the world becomes, the more blurry uh, the, the difference between outside and inside becomes <coughs> becomes too, and that inside becomes outside, outside becomes becomes inside, and the world becomes extremely interconnected, and some neoliberal says hyperconnected or interdependent. But right now uh, we are uh, going through a moment or process in which really actually uh, we see uh, the impacts, enormous uh, and unprecedented uh, impacts of the interconnectedness. What it means to be interconnected, what what it means to be inter inter interdependent, and then outside really shaping relations in this in, in this in this. Region. A number of things are happening at the same time in an in a, in a intertwined uh, fashion. Uh, let me actually make uh, seven points uh, uh, to, to, do, to delineate uh, what is happening uh, in, in, this, in this geography. First, uh, we have, a, as you all know, a big uh, refugee problem. And the refugee problem originates from Syria, Iraq, but also Afghani Af Afghanistan. And, uh, and three countries uh, are... Uh, you know, uh, maintaining these, uh, these refugees, uh, Turkey, Jordan, and Lebanon. Turkey is doing it, uh, we will discuss whether or not it's a good idea, but Turkey does it in a unilateral way, uh, and it is paying for it. It is actually regulating all these movements and mobilities and everything. And uh, 2.5 million uh, Syrians, refugees uh, in Turkey, but when we say 2.5 million Syrians, we are also including in it uh, Iraqis and, and, and um, Afghanis, and, uh, and of course, uh, because of the proactive Turkish foreign policy, we have open door policies, no visa policies, with Syria, Lebanon, Iraq, Afghanistan. So, so in this sense, it is easier to come, 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 to, come to Turkey. Almost two million is in uh, in Jordan and, and and Lebanon, and this is actually being financed and organized by the international organiza or organizations. So we are talking about almost 5 million uh, refugees. And, uh, and if uh, the uh, conflict situation gets more accelerated, uh, this uh, proxy wars uh, you know, and geopolitical games uh, get more and more deepened and, and, and widened in this region, uh, the expectation is these refugees, for instance, uh, uh, you know, if Aleppo falls, you are talking about another million refugees. So we are talking about almost 10 million potentially that might come from, from these regions. But uh, if you are doing conflict resolution and, and, and migration studies, and if you are looking at the refugee and migration situation in Africa, originating from mainly uh, organizations or terror organizations like uh, ISIL, Boko Haram, and, 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 and the others, on the top of it, uh, if you look at actually the refugee and migration situation that are occurring, because of uh, lack of access to water, hygiene, inequality, poverty, so on and so forth. You know, estimates actually is alarming. Uh, we are talking about almost 20 million refugees 
you know, that might be you know, moving towards, uh, towards, towards Europe in the, in the years to come. As a matter of fact, New York uh, economist, uh, New York University economist uh, Rubini, uh, after uh, visiting all the European uh, countries, wrote a sort of a provocative uh, you know, piece in the Project Syndicate and uh, saying that if the Europe is not able to handle one million refugees, so this, this actually uh, 20 million in the near future is really alarming. And in that context, in the Washington circles and the other areas, you know, this, uh, you know, co possibility of third world war, and those kind of actually alarming and, and you know, security oriented possibilities are being actually discussed because of the refugee issue. When we ask why this uh, refugee issue is becoming really alarming, uh, especially in Syria, Iraq, uh, and, 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 and this geography, of course, uh, you know, we hit the second problem, the problem of ISIL. And, and ISIL actually is being expanded, and if I will actually elaborate on it if there are questions about the, about the ISIL. But let me make, uh, to make it a telegraphic form, uh, finish this, this uh, talk uh, in the time that, that we have enough time for, for questions and, answer, and discussions. ISIL is, uh, as it starts two years ago, and as where he, it is right now, it is more than a terror organization less than a state. So it is between actually terror and state. And as a matter of fact, uh, in the way in which uh, ISIL uh, or IS uh, exerts in influence, widens its influence uh, in, in the region, it is true its claim to the state uh, <coughs> rather than being a terror organization. So in this sense, the more ISIL gets the possibility of establishing a state in Syria and, and Iraq, which means if more possibility occurs in terms of Syria and uh, you know, Iraq failing uh, to, be a, to, be a, to be a state, then, then, then ISIL you know, um, expands, ISIL, ISIL, ISIL widens its influence. So, so in this sense, they are brutal, they, they, are, they are grotesque, you know, and, 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 and the way in which they expand, the more refugees we have, actually. And, uh, but of course, uh, these are all intertwined, as I said, uh, sort of interconnected. When we ask this question, when we pose the question, why ISIL has really, has become really strong in a very short time, in the two years we are talking about it, is actually, uh, you know, uh, taking this place, that place, and, and, and the other, other place. Of course, uh, you know, we have a you know, state problem in, in Syria, mainly Syria and Iraq. What I call, and what, uh, what many other calls, is a failed state situation in Syria, in, 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 in Iraq, but also in Libya, in Yemen, in, in Sudan, and in Somali. So these failed states are mushrooming all over the world. And that actually uh, strengthens, strengthens the argument that the more failed states we have, the more refugees we will actually have in this, in this, in this region. By failed state, uh, I mean actually a state that, are not, that is not able to control uh, what goes on in their own territories, that is not able and capable of controlling uh, the mobilities, border mobilities, mobilities uh, in, in, in its own actually. So when, I, when we look at ISIL's claim to be a state, and when we look at Syria and Iraq as being failed states, this is a big challenge on uh, our idea of, of the state, the Westphalian state, because ISIL claim to the state is not a territorial state. It is actually taking place in two states, and also, it has actually a trans-border, transnational references. So, so, so in this sense, uh, all this uh, isolated state, failed state problem also pose question, academically, theoretically, and policy-wise, about the way in which we think about the state. Maybe the existing state thinking is not actually able to deal with these kind of these kind of problems. It's a very important uh, question of the state. In front of Rayan Mahon, when I finished my, when I start my PhD, the first courses we were talking about the state, and after 12 something years, we are back to actually uh, the state, uh, state, state problem. Why actually this state problem, ISIL and refugees are really alarming? Then of course we come to the fourth, uh, fourth development, which I call, with reference to Zbigniew Brzezinski, regional geopolitical power games that are played by uh, by actually actors such as uh, Russia, Iran, Saudi Arabia, and, and Gulf, Gulf, uh, Gulf states, or state-like like, you know, uh, ent ent entities. And as a matter of fact, uh, what goes on uh, in this region uh, is, on the one hand, a big, big, big human tragedy. On the other hand, 
a space for geopolitical power configuration or power, power gain. Russia is there in terms of uh, geopolitical interest. Iran is doing what it is doing in terms of geopolitical, geopolitical interest. Saudi Arabia is doing what it is doing in terms of geopolitical power. So, so we are actually also experiencing a big reconfiguration of power in this, in, this, in this region. This actually takes two forms. One form actually is uh, they do so, they do what they do through what we call, and recently this is also an introduction into uh, the war literature, proxy wars. And, 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 and the Syria is in fact actually on the one hand internal war when it comes to uh, what goes on in Syria. It is a you know, uh, kind of a war because of uh, ISIL, but at the same time a proxy war for Russia and Iran. And as a matter of fact, the way Russia looks at Syria is, is definitely like this. They don't care what goes on in, in, in Syria, but what they care actually is their geopolitical presence in this, in this region, which starts 2004 with Georgia, a pair uh, up, up there, then 2010 Ukraine, through Iran, and now Syria and Iraq, and uh, the Eastern Mediterranean Sea. So it's a big axis based on geopolitical